Good afternoon, Alicia here from the uh, Healthy Moms of Faith group. I'm the founder of the group, so good afternoon. It is afternoon where I am anyways. Um, if you're watching this now, of course, put hashtag live, and if you're watching it later, put hashtag replay so that I know that you are watching this. I know we're all I've got a bunch of different people from all over the world, actually, in this group. So I know that we're all in different different time zones and all of that. So let me know. Where are you from? Where are you watching from when you watch live or the replay? Because that is really cool. We get to be sisters in Christ here, right? So anyways, I'm Alicia. I'm the founder of this group. Uh, welcome to our Wow Wednesday of the week, our Words of Wisdom Wednesday. If you're a little newer to this group, that's what that stands for. Every week I come on and talk about something that pertains to our health and fitness journey, uh, spiritually, mentally, or maybe physically. So if you're new to this group, make sure that you're here every week. Um, I send out a reminder, text reminder, emails to people. So if you wanna be reminded, please let me know. Um, but you can always come back and watch it later. All of these trainings are under guides in the Facebook group. So anyway, so we're gonna get going. If you're watching now, let me know if you can hear me. I see a couple people. Hey, Katie, good to see ya. She's watching from Reno, Nevada. How are the fires over there? Um, I heard Minnesota is getting smoke and stuff too. That's crazy. So let us know how you're doing, Katie. Um, Anyways, we're going to go ahead and get going in our training today. Really excited about this training. This training is, um, we're going to be talking about this fight mentality. And if you didn't watch last week, it kind of follows along with this week. And so when it comes to our health journey, you know, if you're someone that struggles to fight through the obstacles, whether it be spiritual, whether it be physical, when it comes to your health journey, and remember those could be like, you know, our first thing of self-care that we talk about is being in the Word of God, right? That has to be a priority for us spiritually. So if you're someone that struggles to find this fight mentality, um, I talked a little bit about that last week. There's a couple of mentalities that I, I think that we need to really develop in order to fight for our self-care, fight for our health, because this is something that I believe God has called us to as women. So it's so important and so i really wanted to kind of dive into this a little bit deeper today so again if that is you if you're someone who you just feel like it's really hard for you to take the time for yourself to find time for self-care to fight for your health no matter where you are in your health journey then this training will be for you today so um, again welcome to this weekly training um, this training that i do every week is for you guys it's for you moms of faith women of faith because we're here um, because we want to get healthier in spirit, soul, and body. That's why I created this group um, to show that we are designed to live a certain way. God has called us to live a certain way. And so that includes spirit, soul, and body. And so I want you to know that you are designed for life. You are designed to thrive and not just survive. So that's why we're here in this group. So every week I want to be here providing you guys with some value, some trainings, some ideas, some ways that we can just kind of reset things. So if that is you and you're needing that help, um, definitely be here every week. And this is your time to interact with me live in the group. So again, if you're, I have some people, I'm a health coach. And so I have some people in the group that I'm coaching, but if you're not coaching with me, then that's why this free group is here. That's, you know, a way to, for me to help give you some advice, give you some things that you might need in your health journey. So please take advantage of that. That's why it's here. So, all right, well, if you're excited to get going, let me know in the comments or throw me some emojis. Let me know that you're excited. Um, Katie says, yeah, it's still smoky, but improving. <clears throat> yeah, those fires, man, that's crazy, crazy, crazy. So anyways, just to kind of reinstate what we talked about last week, I'm gonna go ahead and get going on our training today. Last week I talked about a couple of mindsets that we need to have when it comes to our health journey. And one of those things, one of the mindsets that I really think that we need to develop, and this is something that I've had to develop over time, is this fight mentality. You know how our bodies will sometimes go into a fight or flight 
um, response. And so I think when it comes to our health journey, we need to really work on this fight mentality and not feel like we always have to run away, right? So there are a couple of factors that I wanna talk about today with this fight mentality. But before I get into that, I wanna just kinda of ask your, I want you to ask yourself this question um, just mentally. If you wanna put it in the comments, you can. Don't feel like you have to share that. But just think to yourself, you know, if you're someone who struggles to find that fight mentality for your health journey, we're just gonna say for that, for your health journey, why do you think that you struggle to find this fight mentality? Why do you feel like there's a lot of ups and downs for you? And just kind of think about that for a minute as I, as I keep talking, but ask yourself that question. Why do you struggle to find the fight mentality when it comes to your health journey? Or maybe think about in the past. Uh, maybe you're good now, but maybe in the past, why, why do you think it was harder for you to find that fight mentality? And, you know, there's, I think there's a, one main factor, right? We're all moms here, we're all women. And I think there's one main factor that plays into why it might be a struggle for you. And that simple fact is, you know, we are all busy, right? We all have responsibilities, things that we have to do. And sometimes, you know, I've talked about this in the past that I, I think that, and I've done this too, and I'm still guilty of this sometimes, life is a is a balancing act, right? And so finding that balance between work life balance, kid life balance, husband life balance, it's hard, right? And so there's going to be different stages where we have it kind of balanced and then it's different stages where we don't. And so, but this is the number one factor that I think we we tend to let take over. I'm gonna say that, we let it take over. We, we're not aware sometimes, sometimes we are, and then we're just in denial, um, but we are all busy, right? And so sometimes that can be our excuse, that can be the number one factor why we are not finding this fight mentality for our health is because life is just crazy, right? Life is just busy. And it reminds me, I was thinking about this idea and so I was just gonna share with you, like this week has been still kind of super crazy since we got back from vacation a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, I'm just in a different phase of life where I've entered into owning a business and doing all these things. And so I really, I'm working at whatever hours I can sometimes. Um, you know, I got the opportunity to, to work at home and so that's awesome, I get to be with my kids, but there's, Sometimes this, you know, mom guilt, of course, my kids are, they're perfectly fine. They can entertain themselves. But, you know, just that mom in me wants to, like, make sure that, you know, I'm with them. And, and again, life is a balancing act, and you should do that. I'm not saying you shouldn't. But I was thinking about this, and so the past couple of days, I actually, I haven't gotten a workout in. But I, um... I decided, you know, I have some non-negotiables when it comes to my fitness. And one of my non-negotiables is I, I at least do something, right? I at least do something. And so I was taking a walk. Yes, oh, it was Monday. I think it was Monday evening. I was taking a walk. And we have a little lake that's close to us. And so I decided to go walk around the lake a couple times. It's a good, probably, I don't know, mile or so. Um, and so I started walking and um, it was interesting because there was this girl that um, she was running and she kind of, she got ahead of me because there where the, the lake comes and you walk around the pond, she kind of passed me and so she started running. And so I just happened to kind of watch her on and off. I was just, you know, keeping up. I was just walking, you know, kind of not even a fast walk. It was just, you know, pretty, pretty light, pretty easy. I just wanted to move. And, you know, I would, I was watching her and she would, well, first of all, she got there before me to where I started and she was jogging. She was jogging there. And then I just happened to look and she'd stopped. And so she was walking. And then, so I just kept walking, you know, and I was just kind of minding my, my own business. And then she'd start running again. And, um, so I, you know, she took off and, um, I kept walking and I was just walking and then I happened to like catch up to her and she was like sitting at one point and so she was um, you know taking a break or whatever and I just kept walking and 
then I, I kind of watched her and she kind of do this. And I'm not saying this is bad. Sometimes Maybe she's training to learn to run and that, that's something that you do is you walk for a little bit, then you run for a little bit. So I'm not, I'm not saying she was doing anything bad or wrong or anything like that. I'm just saying I was just observing. And it made me think about this life that we are called to. And I, I was just thinking it was interesting because as I came around the lake once she had run jog walk and she was only a few paces ahead of me by the time that i got to the same point that she was at and i just thought that's interesting like i was still moving the whole time but she was run jogging and it took us the same amount of time almost to get to the same point and i just thought how interesting it is where when it comes to our life, sometimes that's what we do with our busyness. We get real busy and then we have to pause and take a break and we just, you know, quit. And, and you could think about anything in your life, but specifically we're thinking about our health journey. Sometimes this is what I see is that instead of having a few things to keep moving on, to keep moving on, sometimes we just try to grab everything all at once and we try to do everything all at once and they're like, whoa, 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 that's too much. And then we have to stop and catch our breath, you know. And, and then we start running again. And I was just thinking about this from the perspective of our health journey, of the fact that busyness, taking on things that you may not be called to. I'm just going to put that point blank because I have done that before. The busyness of life creates this type of effect when it comes to your health journey and instead of you know and, and she we got to the same point right but i don't know about her i probably would have been more exhausted instead of i actually went around the pond one more time i walked i walked around actually it was like half half the pond and then i walked home so this is the thing that i find is that this busyness actually wears us down way more so than if we would just slow down if we would find time to do those few baby steps that we need to do for our health and you know i've talked about some of those baby steps before but the first the first one of these things that i really think we have to focus on when it comes to our self-care and the enemy knows the enemy knows that we are designed for greatness as believers and so he wants to keep us busy and so I want you to just make sure you're aware of that when it comes to your life when you, it comes to your busyness you know remember the first strategy that I talked about way back when if you haven't watched that training I think it's called <clears throat> the first strategy for our self-care something like that go back and watch that because I talk a lot more about this um, but the first strategy that we need for our self-care is time in the Word of God it's got to be the first priority. As believers, as Christians, that is where we're going to get our peace from, our joy from, our calm from. Sometimes when life is messy, it's going to be the only place we can turn to. And we, again, this is part of that fight mentality. We have to always be prepared, right? The truth of God's word always has to be implanted in us. We can't just run around and read the, read the word of God when we need it, you know? And I've been there, I've done that, guilty. Um, but the, the idea behind this is when you are running the race of life, of this Christian life that we're called to, following Jesus, it's gotta be steady. You gotta keep walking. And so you gotta do whatever you need to in order to keep that a habit in your life. And so that's the first strategy. Um, the, the first factor that will keep you from being in the word is the busyness of life and the mentality of, well, I'll do it when I need to, when it comes to the word of God. And so if that's you, if you're someone you're like, yeah, I've been there. I've done that. I struggle with that. I, the busyness of life has hit me in the face before and I've just feel like I'm running and then I'm tired and I can't hang on anymore. Um, specifically with your health journey, then just put busy in the comments and let me know, is that you? Because I'm pretty sure all of us moms have dealt with this, have experienced this. 
And, you know, the second factor that I want to talk about here in a second has to do with, again, this idea behind the fact that the enemy knows how to keep us busy individually. It's a, it's a little different, I think, for all of us, especially for women, though. I think we just have this, you know, honestly, I think it's the curse that we got in the garden that we were going to want to be in the same position as our husbands. We, we want to be in control. We don't want to be in submission or have authority over us. And I struggle with this again. I'm not saying I don't, <clears throat> but I know that when I have struggled with being in control of everything, not asking for help, um, you know, just wanting to be able to do it all. We, sometimes we just think that we're super women and, and don't get me wrong. We do a lot. We are amazing creatures that God has created us to be, but we do have limitations. We all have limitations and that is okay. And so sometimes we have got to get to this point where we understand the enemy is going to try to make you busy. So he keeps you distracted, keeps you distracted from the word. That's the first factor we were talking about. But he also understands who we are as Christians, as believers, as women. And so he doesn't want you to understand the truth of who you are. And that was something that I kind of talked about last week where, you know, when it comes to fighting spiritual wars, um, and, and I think spiritually we're going to fight more wars than we are physically maybe in this day and age. But when we think about the armor of God, the first thing that it says in there is to put on the belt of truth. That's the first piece of armor that we need to put on. And where does truth come from? The truth comes from the word of God. So again, that's why I think it's so important that the first strategy we focus on when it comes to our health is being in the word of God, finding that truth. So this is part of that second factor, and I wanted to read some scripture that I was meditating on. Actually, while I was walking yesterday, I was working on memorizing some verses, and it just kind of all came together for me in, in a different way that I'd never seen before. And I just thought, this really applies to what I was going to talk about this week, which is crazy how the Holy Spirit works, right? So I think this is part of that second factor, is that we have to understand the truth of who we are and again the enemy knows the enemy knows but do you know do i know the truth of who we are and this plays into that fight mentality so much i've seen this in my life i've seen this in my clients lives and other people in my family's lives when you understand how you are truly designed as a believer how god originally designed us to be as humans humans in general whether you are a christian whether you're a follower of christ or not this is who you are. And so I want to read to you 1 John 5, 1 through 5. And I was memorizing this. And it really, that's one thing that's really cool about if you take some time to memorize stuff. You really have to stop and think about what is it saying? What does it mean? So that you can remember it, right? I teach um, kids in our church how to memorize the verses and so I put motions to it so that really helps me to remember things so I'm going to read this to you but remember we're talking about truth here we're talking about truth of who we are in Christ right so it says first John 5 it says everyone uh, verse 1 5 verse 1 everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ that's important has become a child of God. So if you believe that Jesus is a Christ, he's God, you've become a child of God. That's what it says. And everyone who loves the Father, we're talking about God, remember the Trinity. So it's saying everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. So if you believe that Jesus is God, and if you believe that God um, loves his children, or sorry, everyone who, if you love God, so if you love God, if you love Jesus and you believe that Jesus is God, he's the Holy Spirit, it has the Holy, the Holy Spirit in him, then, then we love his children too. So it says we should love other people who love God and who believe that Jesus is God and that the Holy Spirit was indwelt in him. And then verse 2 says, we know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. 
So we're working to follow him. We're working to seek the scriptures and understand how to walk in our life, how to follow Christ or, or God. Um, okay. So then verse 3 says, Loving God means keeping his commandments, right? Doing what he's asked us to do. And his commandments are not burdensome. I thought that was really interesting. Sometimes I think we think following Jesus is hard, but it even says in scripture, I forget where, that his, his burden is light, right? And so that's why I think this is so important is if you read this, if you do this first, all these things come together, right? Um, and then it says, so his commandments are not burdensome. Verse 4, for every child of God, this is the important part um, that we're talking about today. <laughs> Anyways, for every child of God, so if you're a child of God, defeats this evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. That verse 4 is so, so important. So, again, this is the truth of who you are. So if you say... I believe that Jesus is God, that he was indwelt with the Holy Spirit. Then you are a child of God. If you've done that in your life at some point and you've committed your life to following him, following his commandments, then that proves that you are a child of God. You're loving other people. That proves that you are a child of God, right? Not that it's perfect, but we're working on it. And so then it says, this is, this is so important. This is the truth, right? This is the truth. Verse 4, for every child of God defeats this evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. Right? We talk about faith is the evidence of things not seen. And so this is the truth. The truth is, I'm going to read verse 5. Um, and who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. It's kind of this like circle thing where if you believe that Jesus is the Christ, if you do these things, if you do these things, then you can achieve victory. But that's who you are. And it's nothing, it's nothing that we've done. It's all in Christ, right? That's who you are. And, you know, again, this truth, the enemy knows. He knows this truth. And so that's, that's one of those things that this is the second factor is when we stop, when we look in scripture for these truths, you're going to find them and you're going to see that you are, if you're a child of God, you are already a victor. You are are indwelt with the Holy Spirit. Part of it, though, is just accessing it, right? I talk about that. And so this is who you are. This is what you have. We just have to learn how to use it, right? That is what the flesh is learning to do. The flesh will never be perfected until we're in heaven. But when you know and you start to apply this, it reminds me of a story that I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, so my family and I, we, we like to watch these different shows on Netflix. And we're, we're watching our cartoon one right now. I don't know if you guys have watched it. It's called The Troll Hunter's Tale of Ar- Tales of Arcadia. That's what it is. So <clears throat> it's this mythical thing that we, we like watching it. Anyways, they there's this um, this kid. And the troll hunters are like these like well, trolls. They're like these huge, bulky guys. There's like this underground world. Anyways, and so somehow a troll hunter dies and then you're given this like position to be the protector of the troll hunter. So anyways, it ends up happening that a human boy picks up the, um, I forget what it's called. There's a thing. Anyways, the, the old troll hunter gets killed and he happens to be there and he picks it up and so then he becomes the troll hunter but he's a human. And so that's that's all about this story. So anyways, but there's this point where they're on one of these adventures and oh it's called an amulet is what it's called, amulet. And he says a certain words and then he gets he goes up into the air and he gets his armor put on. And he comes down and he has this special sword. 
Anyways, and so um, last night we were actually watching an episode and they're working on this specific battle and they have to find these stones. And so they found two of these stones and every time they get a stone, they take a little piece of it and he puts it in his amulet. And then what happens later is he gets some sort of like special extra power that when his his armor comes on, he has this extra power that he can fight better with. So anyways, that happened. And then they, he, there was this like game that they had to play. So he had to like earn his amulet before um, he could use his, his armor and stuff. So anyways, they're in this battle. He, he gets the amulet and they're at one point <clears throat> and he goes to jump and he goes to block and all of a sudden he has this like shield on his arm that like blocks, you know, the other team or whatever. And so then he looks down and he's like, oh, wow, that's what happens now with that stone. You know, and I was thinking about that today. And I was like, that's how it is with the Holy Spirit. It really is. We have access to all these different ways to fight. They're given to us. It's a part of who we are. We just have to figure out how to use it. But you can't do it unless you use this. And Jim, the, the kid who is the neutral hunter, he couldn't do that unless he used the amulet. The amulet um, is what gave him that power. And once he put it on, he said the words that he's supposed to put it on, and he puts it on, then he has access, right? And he's able to like be victorious and nobody can beat him, or rarely. You know, and that's how it is. That's part of this fight that we are a part of. That's the mentality that we have to have. And so I think you really have to understand you have it in you. If you're a child of God, if you believe that Jesus is the Christ, you have become a child of God. And it says every child of God defeats this evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. Faith is putting it into practice. Faith is the action of reading the word of God, of testing it, of, you know, and that was the other thing I was thinking about is you don't really know sometimes that you have these things until you start to fight some battles. And so sometimes we quit before we even start the battle because we're like, no, I can't, I can't handle that. Except for you don't press in enough to find out that, oh, I have this new shiny shield. Oh, that will work, you know? And so, <laughs> You know, it's kind of a silly example, but that's how it really is. Until you start reading this, take your sword with you. And I talked about that last week. There are going to be obstacles. There are going to be things that we have to resist. Resistance is going to come. And I know this could, this could be applied to really anything. But again, we're thinking about our health journey and our health journey is spiritual. And so our health journey, starts in our mind. You have to change the way you think in order for your life to change. And so the definition of insanity, if you're doing the same thing over and over again and you're staying in the same place, why are you expecting a different result? We gotta change the way that we think. And that fight mentality is something that we have to work on. We have to use scripture. So <clears throat> if that is you, where you you're understanding this, you're seeing this, and you're like, I gotta figure out how to do that. I gotta figure out how to find this fight mentality. Then just put fight in the comments and let me know if that if that's you, you know, do you struggle with this? Katie put up a verse. I'm curious. Matthew eleven thirty. I think I know what this verse is. But I wanted to see. Oh no. Just kidding. Oh, there you go. She said the verse that I was talking about earlier. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. And that was Jesus talking about, you know, the um, going right along with the commandments of the Lord are not burdensome. Thank you, Katie. That's awesome. So yeah, if that's you, if you need to have more of this fight mentality, you need to figure this out, put fight in the comments and let me know because you're not alone and there is hope. I've been there there are other ladies that I've talked to that have been there. This is something that you can make a part of your life. It can help you so much um, to have this fight mentality for your health, um, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. It's all part of it, right? And so if you struggle with 
you know, getting healthier or mindsets about getting healthier, oftentimes I find that it starts with our mentality. There's a mentality that we're stuck in. And as, as believers in Christ, we have victory as a child of God and we can fight it. We just have to start with fighting it in our mind first. And so that fight mentality has to come from our mind, from the way that we're thinking. So, well, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, next week, I want to continue talking about, you know, this idea behind self-care. And, you know, I've talked about self-care, but I think it's just so important because as moms, we just struggle with this. We struggle with guilt to take time for ourselves. We struggle with busyness to take time for ourselves. And there, I think there's a certain, you know, balance again that we're talking about. But self-care, it, it is so important. And Jesus even took time to rest and, and, you know, get in the word and be alone with God and, and to restore his, his flesh. He was flesh, but he was fully God. So this idea of, you know, taking time for self-care is something that I want to talk about um, quite a bit because, excuse me, this is something that I really believe God desires for us. Jesus walked this. Um, you know, Jesus had a mission and and he he did this he took time for himself and if you are not taking care of yourself as a woman as a mom and you have kids you cannot fulfill your purpose as well if you don't take some time for your, yourself and that is okay it is not wrong there's a balance um you know we have responsibilities we have to do certain things but you can make it happen i've done it in my own life i've seen other moms do it there is a balance that you can find so I really want to talk about that more, and um, we'll talk about that next week. And then again, if you need some help learning how to apply more of this fight mentality, um, you know, just put that in the comments. Put fight in the comments and let me know, and I'll reach out to you. And we can just have a little chat. We can, we can talk about it, see what maybe direction, maybe some passages that you need to focus on, some scriptures that you need to focus and meditate on and, and allow those things to be a part of your life, right? All right. Well, you guys have a great Wednesday. I will see you guys next week. Bye.